Hello, hello, hi. Hello, warriors. <laughs> hi, everybody. Very good evening and a warm welcome to Vedanta J English channel. Quickly go ahead and let me know how is your preparation going on. How is your preparation going on, everybody? I really want to know. How is it going on? Yes, Raghu is also asking you how is your preparation going on. I want to know. Come on, guys. Go ahead. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. All the very best, first of all. And uh, unlike how it's happening everywhere else, guess what? I'm not going to take too much of your... Yes, so for organic what I have done is I have the whole chart prepared. The moment the class ends, I'll be providing it to you in the telegram channel and I expect you all to just go through it because right now if I teach you organic, I don't think it's going to help you. The session is going to be too long and doesn't work out like this. The last very day, I expect you all to stay calm and just give yourself a little time and you know, give... Just, just a little time for self-study, guys. Watching videos the whole day is not going to help you. So let's let's quickly go ahead. Let's quickly go ahead, everybody. I'm not going to take too much time. I'm telling you again and again, not going to take too much time. Within 20 to 30 minutes, we will be finishing off this session. All right? I don't want you all to stay here more than this. And don't even stick to YouTube, guys. Really, please, stop watching all the videos and, you know, you have to go and study. Don't worry Shreyans, everybody we are going to do it. Yes, no confidence Ashwini, you are going to do it. Tech blogs for uh, getting sent up which materials I must do. <gasps> Haven't you watched that? 95 plus. I recently had uh, posted a video. No, yesterday only that video went. Please watch that. It's only for 10 minutes. Watch it. Chalo. Let's begin everybody. Let's begin with our formula. Let's, let's do it everybody. Yes, so now that you are here, if you are here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you know that this channel provides you with all the information related to all your competitive exams such as JE, such as EMC and in fact, a little bit of board help is also provided to you and everything absolutely in English. Yes, so don't forget to like the video as well. Those of you who are following us from a very long time, please do like the video. That, that shows your support, huh? Come on, it's your exam and I'm also studying with you and I'm also teaching with you. So that support is needed for me also. So don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like the video. Now, moving on, moving on. So let's do the first thing for solutions. Okay, let's let's revise the uh, formula for solutions because most of the numericals are going to come from physical chemistry. Let's face it, right? Physical chemistry has a huge chunk of numericals that can come. So... Yes, easy peasy biryani is tasty. Write that down, write that down, write that down. How many hours? Half an hour max. I'm not going to take your time. Unlike everybody else on the YouTube who are taking sessions for what, two hours, three hours? I don't want you all to do that, guys. Half an hour max. Minimum effort, maximum output. That's what we are looking for. Yes? Chalo. So, our first, our first formula from, first formula from solution is Mass percentage of a volume. In fact, I have also written everything so that I don't write and waste your time a little bit. Yes, Ragui, ma'am, will the board paper be easy or difficult? Do I look like an astrologer? <laughs> I'm not. See, if you have studied everything, it's going to be easy. If you haven't, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. So, chal. Mass percentage of a com component, that is W by W. Okay. So, how do we get that? How do we get that? We are going to see mass of component in solution divided by total mass of solution. All right. Mass of component in mass of component and into 100 because it is percentage here because it is percentage here. So we are going to write into 100. Okay. All right. Now volume percentage of a component. How do we calculate V by V? That is volume of the component. Basically, it's supposed to be solute. Yeah, basically. Volume of the component, that is the solute. And then total volume of the solution. What is the total volume of the solution? And of course, because it's percentage, so you are obviously always going to write 100, isn't it? Percentage means 100, right? Percentage means 100, isn't it, everybody? Yes? So we can understand from this. Now, mole fraction, guys. Mole fraction can come for maybe one and a half marks or two marks, but not more than that because... You cannot really get really huge numericals which may cost you 3 to 4 marks, right? Yes, so mole fraction will be coming definitely but for lesser marks. So, 
more fact, but but it is the fundamental, right? It is the fundamental of this chapter. You skip this, you will not be able to solve anything else. Yeah. So let's take a look at it. Yeah. Mole fraction of a component is number of moles of the component divided by total number of moles of all components. Correct, everybody. Yes, correct, everybody. Do we know about this? Do we know about this? Any confusion here? Any confusion here, everybody? Also, I had put up a video on solutions where I have solved everything for you. So check it out if you haven't, so that you don't miss out on this. Okay, moving on. Parts per million. Guys, parts per, parts per million, like I said, is absolutely same as mass percentage of a component. Only difference is here you multiply with 100 and here you multiply with 10 to the power 6. Parts per million. Clear? Yes? Clear? Clear everybody? Clear guys? Clear? Number of parts of component divided by total number of parts of all component of solution. Here you multiply with 100 because you need percentage, percentage and here you need million. So 10 to the power 6. Yes, makes sense? Makes sense or nonsense? I actually learned it from a colleague of mine who keeps saying that makes sense, nonsense, makes sense, nonsense. And I really thought that, hmm, that's a good way to, uh, that's a good way to say something. So does it make sense everybody? Come on. But we don't have enough time, Harini. Revise this. Revise. This is for your revision. Okay. This is for your revision. Yes. Yes. Makes sense. Amazing. Now, moving on. Molarity. <laughs> One of the most popular, you know, molarity, 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 everybody. Yes, Celine. That's why I'm doing. Do you think I'm passing your time? But if you really think that I'm just passing your time and I'm doing it like a hobby, <laughs> then I think you should study on your own. But if you think that the formulas are going to help you, you can stay. I have really no problem with it. But like I said, I really expect you all to study now. Okay? Alright? Yes. So, molarity. How do you denote molarity, guys? How do you denote molarity and how do you denote molality? Yes? You don't like molarity, but it is popular. What can you do? So, number of moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liters. Molarity is capital M. This is small m, right? Molality. Number of moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in kilograms. And then there is also something called as normality. Number of gram of equivalent of solute divided by volume of solution in liters. Yes? All right, everybody. Clear, 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 clear. Yes, all chapters that are included in your included in your exam. Okay, now let's go to now let's go to this formula. What is this formula for? And what does it say? Yes, what does it say? This is relative lowering of vapor pressure. Yes, very good. This is for. Let me write this with yellow so that you can clearly distinguish. This is relative lowering of lowering of vapor pressure all right yes relative lowering of vapor pressure so p1 normality once again yes normality is number of gram equivalent of solute divided by volume of solution in liters okay Alright, so P10 minus P1 divided by P10 is equal to X2. Alright, yes, now how can we write X2? How can we write X2? This can also be written as, come on guys, this can, somebody is writing, ma'am, please give us W1 and W2. Chal, this can be written as N2 divided by N1 plus N2, isn't it? This is how also you can write it. Shiva, wait for some time, bacha. We are doing this, no? Now we are doing physical, right? So let's do this, yes? This is mole fraction of a solute. What is this? This is mole fraction of a solute. Mole fraction of a solute. Correct? Correct, Aita? <laughs> yes, correct, Aita? I think, uh, Salam, this is only for uh, you to be able to solve the numericals, okay? This is only for you all to be able to solve the numericals. So, check it out, okay? Check it out, chal. Yes? Got it? Clear? Mole fraction of a solute, okay? 
Now, delta T is equal to TB minus TB naught. Please tell me which formula is this for? This is for which? This is for which formula, everybody? This is elevation of boiling point, isn't it? Yes. Elevation in boiling point. All right. So, a lot of questions do come from these, okay? A lot of questions do come from this elevation in boiling point or the uh, depression in freezing point. Now, what is KB here, my dear student? What is KB? Everybody knows this, right? KB is ebulloscopic constant or, yes, what is it? Boiling point elevation constant, right? So, I'm going to write the smaller name that is ebi ebullioscopic okay ebullioscopic constant all right okay and then here we have kf kf is your cryoscopic constant yes this is your cryoscopic constant right and then delta T here is, my dear student, what is this? This is depression in freezing point. Depression in freezing point. Okay? Clear? So solution chapter is nice? Solution chapter is alright? Yes? No problem, Shri Batson. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you so much. How to calculate boiling point from elevation in boiling point? Very good question. You know, right? TB minus TB naught. So, bacha, if this is elevation in boiling point, after that you, uh, you won't be able to... Uh, <coughs> after that you won't be able to uh, calculate boiling point. And Raghav, please watch solutions. I have done a full session on numericals of solution. Will you be able to check it out? Will you please be able to check it out? Yeah. So you just have to add them to get your, once you get delta T, okay. Once you get delta TB, elevation in boiling point, then elevation in boiling point plus the boiling point at that 1 atm, you will add them to get the boiling point, okay. I've already cleared that. Please watch it, okay. Yes, I will provide Ananya. I will. The moment I end the session, I will be giving it to you. Don't worry, okay. I will be giving it to you. Yes. Chalo. Moving on. Now we go to osmotic pressure. Okay. Osmotic pressure is also, you know that, right? I is osmotic pressure. C is your molarity. C is molarity. R is gas constant. Correct. R is gas constant. And T, my dear student, is your temperature. Okay. Now this, you can also write it as, you can also write it, what if they ask you for molar mass of the substance, right? What if they ask you for molar mass of the substance and given that they have provided the osmotic pressure and everything, then what will you do? You can calculate it with this, okay? You can calculate it with this. M2 is equal to W2. What is W2? W2 is the amount of solute that is given in the question, okay? Amount of solute that is given in the question, okay? I have in Sujata, I will send it to you. After this class, I will send it to you, okay? After this class. Huh. Also, here you will have to write I is equal to CR2. What is I? I is your Van Hoff factor. Van Hoff factor. You all know how to calculate I? Everybody knows how to calculate I, right? Yes? Everybody knows how to calculate I? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? PYQ, yeah, yeah, PYQ is enough for DNF block. Yeah, DNF block you can calculate from PYQ. Yes, I, I will, we will, we will, we will. I'll give you the whole chart, but chart, don't worry. The whole chart is ready. It is going to be absolutely easy for you. I'm not going to teach you the mechanism or anything. I'll just show you the chart and I'll send it to you so that you don't waste your time. You don't know? But your I is Van Toff factor. How do you calculate I? How do you calculate I? Basic, I I'll show you. I'll show you. This is I. This is I. Basically, let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. See. What if you have NaCl, okay? What will NaCl do? NaCl will dissociate, right? It will become Na plus plus Cl minus. So, I value from here will be is equal to 2. Now, let's say Ca 
Cl2. CaCl2 will dissociate as Ca2 plus plus 2 Cl minus. What will be the I value here? I value will be equal to 3 because 3 ions. 1 this and there are 2 of this, right? 1 here and 2 here. So that means 3 is the I, I value is equal to 3. Understood? Understood? Yes, I will, Pavitra. Let me finish the class after that. Okay, Pacha? Yes. I'm not Durga Mata. Yeah. I can't do so much work. <laughs> I'll have to finish this class, then I'll send you the PDF. Promise, pakka promise. Mark kasam. <laughs> okay. Uh, Amma, I have a doubt whether it is enough to find delta TB if boiling point is up. No, it's not. Raghu, I suggest you, bacha, after this session, please watch the solutions numericals at 1.5x. 1.5x. Don't waste too much of your time. 1.5x or 1.75x, you are going to watch the session. Do not watch it otherwise. Please, okay? Watch it. I have done a lot of a lot of numericals. Watch that, you will be understanding. Okay? All right. Why I? Because that is the formula, sweetheart. That is the formula. Okay? Pi is equal to I C R T. That's how you calculate osmotic pressure. Okay? Moving on. So I. What is I? I is Van Hoff factor. I just told you. So Van Hoff factor you can calculate as normal molar mass divided by abnormal molar mass. Or you can calculate it as observed, observed colligative property. You know that these are all part of boiling point, freezing point. It's all part of colligative property, isn't it? Yes. So, observed colligative property divided by calculated colligative property. Or what you can do is total number of moles of particles after association or dissociation divided by total number of part, number of moles of particles before association divided by dissociation. Remember it? After is on the top, before is at the bottom. Yes, how will you remember? After is on the top, before is at the bottom. Alright, how do you remember it? Which letter comes first? A or B? A comes first. So A comes first, write A on the top. B comes bottom, B comes after A. So write before, okay? This is how you remember. After before A by B. Alright. A by B. Uma Santil, once again, bacha, let's not waste too much time. Please watch the numerical session. Okay. Let's go to the next. next let's go to the next. Now, inclusion of Banthoff factor. Once Banthoff factor came into the picture. Once Banthoff factor came into the picture, what happened was the Banthoff factor, it modified the equation for properties. Right. It modified the properties it modified the equations of colligative properties all right so let's check it out p1 naught minus p1 divided by p1 naught is equal to c i was included yes i was included and you got n2 by n1 now delta tb elevation in boiling point how can you calculate here also you have ebullioscopic constant but here you are adding van Hoff factor now this time what are you going to do you can also assume i to b is equal to 1. Isn't it when? When we know that the substance is not going to dissociate. When we know that the substance is not going to dissociate, we consider I to be is equal to 1. And then the whole equation looks as it is. Like nothing happened. Not, like no changes happened. Right? We can do this also. Delta Tf, that is depression and freezing point. Yes, once again, you are going to include I. Here also, see osmotic pressure also changed, my dear student. I is equal to, uh, for, sorry. Pi is equal to I multiplied with N2RT divided by V. So basically, so basically what happened here was, here I was not included because this was before, before what happened? This was before, absolutely before Van Hoff factor, okay? Alright, yes, got it? Oh, what happened? What happened, Krishna? Should I practice NCRT book? questions for every chapter. Uh, I don't think this is the right time. I would rather say that you please revise all the chapter because this is not the right time for you to study NCRT anymore. Okay. <coughs> I think uh, yes, Raghav. I think yes. That much is done. That much is I think accepted. Okay. That much is I think accepted. Chalo. Moving on, moving on, moving on everybody. Okay. One second guys, I move this, I'm not able to see what you guys are writing in the chat. Yes, I would say that it, it is the best thing to go with the summaries, which is why I'm taking a session right now. 
Now, finally, to Raoult's law. Okay, finally, let's take a look at Raoult's law. So, according to Raoult's law, for a solution of volatile liquids, the partial vapor pressure. What does it say? Basically, it is saying that if you have a container here, and there are different different components. Okay, and if there are different different components, so basically, what will happen is their partial vapor pressure. When you add all of their partial vapor pressure, you will get the. You will get what? What? Sorry. Wait a second. Let's read this first. According to Raoult's law, for a solution of volatile liquids, the partial vapor pressure of each component in the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction. Basically, if you have a container and there are several, uh, you know, several volatile liquids kept in it, then their mole fraction is what will tell us about the vapor pressure of each of the components. Okay. The mole fraction will tell us the vapor pressure, the partial vapor pressure. Cool, all right. So basically, P one is equal to P one naught x one, and P two is equal to P two naught x two. And by using Dalton's law of partial pressure, we can calculate the total pressure of solution, which is P one naught, P one naught, yes, plus P two naught minus P one naught x two. That will be giving you. P total, yes, that is exactly what Raoul said. Yes, the total will be from here. Okay, you will be getting the total. All right, clear everybody. Clear, 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 guys. Yes, guys. Chemical kinetics also coming up. Association and dissociation. I have already cleared. Am I not? Why you guys are not understanding? I have taken the solution numericals. Watch it. Watch it. Please watch it. Okay. Now let's take a look at electrochemistry. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Electrochemistry? Yes. Yes. Chal. Let's take a look at electrochemistry. So the first and the easiest one here is E naught cell. E naught cathode minus E naught anode. In the last class also I told you how do you remember it? Remember O A R C. Oxidation for anode and reduction cathode. Okay. See. Reduction cathode. Oxidation anode. Okay. Yes, this is how you find it out. This is how you find it out. Cool. Moving on from here, Nernst equation. Very important, guys. A lot of every single year. If you just take a look at the past five years of questions, you will find a lot of questions from Nernst equation. Very important. So please do not forget to take a look at it or just solve before going to the exam. At least solve three questions by Nernst equation. Okay. Please solve three questions from three questions which uh, go through Nernst equation so that you can increase some marks. Okay, you can increase some marks. So A A plus B B, yes, gives you C C plus D D. Now E cell is equal to E naught cell, E naught cell minus R T. R T you know right? Yes, R T is what gas constant and temperature divided by N F. N F uh, F is Faraday's yes, then L N and then you are going to write the products here on the top. Reactants at the bottom, okay? Products on the top, reactants at the bottom. All right, all right, everybody. Yes, moving on. Cell potential at equilibrium. What is cell potential at equilibrium, guys? I'm not going to like I said, everybody. Yes, I would require you to only focus on the <coughs> formula. Nothing else. I do not want to waste your time. Whatever you have to study, please study on your own. Tonight is not the time when you have to learn new concepts. Okay, whatever you know, revise. Okay. Now, cell potential at equilibrium. E naught cell is equal to R T by N F L N K Q. Now, at K equivalent, at K equivalent, this is what you get. Again, very important. Okay. At K equivalent, what do you get? Two point three or three R T divided by N F. Log K E Q. Now coming to Gibbs free energy. This is not recorded, Bharat. I just spoke with my students. <laughs> Such doubts you have. Before one day before exam, your doubt is: Is this recorded? Huh? <laughs> Chalo. Gibbs free energy and cell potential, guys. Delta G naught cell is equal to minus N F E naught cell. Once again, Faraday's is coming here as well. Okay. Now delta G naught cell is equal to from here we can also write it as minus R T L N K E Q okay K 
KEQ that means which is equal to minus 2.303 RT log KEQ same thing from here right from here by looking at this we can also find this right by looking at that you can also find this isn't it yes yes or no guys yes or no yes or no everybody yes or no I am expecting that you have already you have already done a lot of these questions I hope that you are already done with a lot of these questions. If not, if not, you must practice before you go for your exam. Alright? Yes. Great. Moving on. Conductivity of electrolyte solution. Specific conduction, uh, conductance kappa is equal to C into L by A. What is L? L is length. You all know that. Length. Area of cross section. Area of cross section right yes and then this is the unit guys one more time please do not forget the unit unit always carries at least half marks you might be losing half 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 mark might cost you five marks also do not forget the unit okay all right now moving on lambda equivalent is, is equal to kappa into thousand divided by normality and then you have your unit Siemens centimeter per square equivalent to the power minus 1. Lambda m is equal to <coughs> kappa into 1000 divided by molarity. Again, Siemens centimeter to the power minus 2 mole to the power minus 1. Now, D by Huckel on Sager's equation is for strong electrolytes. What is this for? This is for strong electrolytes. All right. For strong electrolytes, you know that the equation is, you know that the equation is lambda m to the power c, which is equal to lambda m to the power infinity minus b root over c. In your book, it is given as c to the power half, which is basically the same thing, okay? All right, now that we are, we know about strong electrolytes, we also have to know about weak electrolyte. In, way, in, in, in that case, Kohlrausch's law comes into picture, okay? Alright, now Kohlrausch's law, it says that lambda equivalent is equal to basically lambda cation, okay, at infinite dilution, at infinite dilution, yes, lambda of cation plus lambda anion, okay, and that means that you can write it as x lambda c cation at infinite uh, dilution plus y lambda a in, uh, infinite dilution, okay. Now here what will happen is degree of dissociation of an electrolyte, how can you calculate? You can calculate as alpha is equal to lambda m to the power c, c means cation and then lambda m here at infinity, alright? Yes, this is all that you have, okay? This is all that you have. And finally, Faraday's law of electrolysis, it has, there are two laws, but the first law is just something that you have to know but you know that from the first law, you will hardly have any problems, okay? Hardly any problems will come. Hardly any problems. Hardly any problems you will be asked to solve by the first law of electrolysis, which is W proportional to Q. Where W is basically the mass of chemical, mass of chemical deposit, you know that you have an electrolytic cell. You provide electricity, there is chemical reaction that goes on, right? Provide electricity, chemical reaction happens, isn't it? Now, when you provide electricity, there are certain things that are getting deposited, right? Exactly what we are talking about here. The W is the mass of the chemical deposition. Alright, okay. And now, Q is, what is Q? Q is the amount of charge required for the deposition, as it? How much electricity are you providing in how much time? Correct? Oh? Clear? Clinical clear everybody? Clinical clear? Do we know this? Now, after this, this is more important for your problem solving. To show your problem solving skills. Yes, easy peasy biryani is tasting. That's what I'm expecting. Yes. Yes. This is what will show you your problem solving skills. What is your problem solving skills? Do you have it amazing? If it, if, if it is amazing, then this is where you need to focus. So, second law of electrolysis. Basically, what do you have? You have a cathode, you have an anode. You have a cathode, you have an anode. Right? 
So that means that you will have two things, right? You will definitely have two things. Yes, you will have two things. So absolutely yes, WA divided by WB which is equal to EA divided by EB. Now that means what are the terms? WA and WB are basically the deposited amounts of A and B respectively. Two electrodes, the cathode and the anode will be of different substances, isn't it? Will be made up of different substances. And that is why you are writing of A and B. A and B are basically two different substances. Clear? Clinical clear? Yes. Now, EA and EB are equivalent or equivalent weights of A and B respectively. That's it. And here is the end of electrochemistry. Let's go to the next chapter, chemical kinetics. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Ready, ready, ready guys. While you are getting ready, if you are not ready, then I am going to drink some water. I am going to drink some water. Yes. I cannot take more time guys. Let's quickly finish it. Let's quickly finish it because like I said, it's already 25 minutes. I cannot take more than 40 minutes. I cannot take more than 40 minutes. I don't want to take more than 40 minutes. I need you all to study on your own more. I need you all to study on your own more than... Uh, beta, I think uh, right now it's 8.31. Let's finish it by 8.45. Okay? Let's finish it by 8.45. Chalo. <coughs> Chemical kinetics. Chemical kinetics. Such a rate of reaction. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows this. Rate of reaction. I'm guessing you know. This session will go until we die. No dude. Why will I do that? Huh? Why will I do that? <laughs> all the chapters, bacha, all the chapters. Harshini, all the chapters. Wasim sir class. Yes, where is Wasim sir's class? Here. He will be taking care of the J, you know? Don't worry. Chalo. Ha. Huh. Rate of reaction for a general chemical transformation, which is, let's say that Na plus Mb it gives you Pc plus Qd. This is your product, as you all know. Right now, what will be the rate? You know that the reactant side will have negative. The reactant sides have negative. See, minus 1 by N, D, square bracket A by DT, D by DT of A basically. And then again, D by DT of B, D by DT of C. And this side, see, product side, you will have positive. Product side, you will have positive. Yes, bacha, organic too. Chill. Alright, moving on. Order of reaction. What is the order of reaction? Let's find out. Again, for a general reaction of, of the type AA plus BB, which gives you product, rate is dx by dt is equal to, as you know, right, k, and then square bracket a to the power m into b to the power n. You know this formula, right? You know this formula. So, order of reaction with respect to A, with respect to A is this exponent m. Now, order of reaction with respect to B is m. So, what will be my total order of reaction? m plus n. M plus N, isn't it? Easy peasy biryani is tasty. So order of reaction, can we all do this? Can we all absolutely crack it in our tomorrow's exam? Yes. Yes, Lokesh. Yes, Bacha. Shreyanshi. Abhi to, right now only we did know Faraday's law and everything. That was related to cell. I'm only giving you the most important formula, Bacha. Tonight is not the time to give you a detailed orientation of how the exam paper is going to look like. You all know that. Assuming that you all know that. Okay. Okay. Clear? Order of reaction. Absolutely acing it, right? We are going to ace it. Yes. Say it. Affirmation. Positive affirmation. We are going to do it. We are going to ace it. Yes. Moving on. Now, integrated rate equation for a zero order reaction. If there is a zero order reaction, A gives you B. So, rate will be minus D by DT of A, which is equal to K, A to the power zero. Why zero? Zero order reaction. K is your constant. K is your constant. Or you can also write it as K is equal to A naught minus A T divided by T. Okay. Divided by T. Alright. Yes, bacha. Saranya. We'll go there. We'll go there. Now, integrated rate equation for a first order reaction, bacha lo. For a first order reaction, this is what you have to remember. Okay. This is what you have to remember or this. Any of this. K is equal to 2.303 divided by T log 10 of A naught divided by A T or 2.303 
2.303 divided by t log 10 a by a minus x c i would uh, tell you that you cannot take log logarithm table right you cannot take it either they will give it or i would say that this value just remember it just remember it you can calculate it okay yes if it is very important then they might give it to you in the question but don't take chances don't take chances yes don't take chances just remember it log tank value right you can remember it very easily yes very good chalo moving on easy peasy biryani is tasty can we say this for this also for first order reaction can we say this integrated rate equation for a first order yes shreyansi <laughs> yes shreyansi i gave it to you i gave it to you thank you so much now integrated rate equation for a first order reaction can we clear it yes is this doable guys is this doable so the moment you see the formula does it feel like yes i know this i know this i can do it or does it feel like whoa i don't know even this if it feels like oh my god i don't even know this then what you can do is do the chapter read the chapter watch a video what else what else my ideal scenario for you all would be to just watch the session and after that do your own self study but if you haven't if it looks very tough then just read the chapter once okay moving on half life of zero order reaction t half is equal to a not by 2k okay half life of first order reaction t half is equal to 0.693 divided by k okay okay is, isn't this very easy this is very easy right what do you have all multiples of 3 all of these are multiples of 3 so you can easily do it 0.693 divided by k okay arrhenius equation my dear student you can say that k is equal to a e to the power minus e a divided by r t where t is kelvin temperature yes r is gas constant everybody knows it e a is activation energy Act energy activation energy activation energy k is your rate constant yes what is this capital a capital a is frequency factor or pre exponential factor and e is your mathematical quantity e okay e is your mathematical quantity e arrhenius equation i think this is also doable you can do it very easy not too not too difficult if not then i suggest that please read the chapter a chemical kinetics once again you will be able to do it okay moving on activation energy at two different temperature if there are two different temperature how will you find the activation energy so basically ln of k2 divided by k1 is equal to ear 1 by t1 minus 1 by t2 which if you try to solve it then what will you do log of k2 divided by k1 is equal to ea divided by 2.303 and then 1 by t1 minus 1 by t2 now this is very easy right just take the just the usual mathematics t2 minus t1 divided by t1 t2 okay divided by t1 t2 okay that's it this is what we are going to remember in our exam okay this is what we are going to remember for tomorrow's exam all right okay okay guys yes yes for r there are different bacha no r no it's universal gas constant isn't it universal gas constant bacha yes Chal. moving on moving on moving on dnf block everybody ready dnf block for tomorrow everybody ready let's do it dnf block so general electronic configuration of d block element what is the general electronic configuration the general electronic configuration is n minus 1 d to the power 1 2 10 d can be 1 d can be 2 d can be 3 d can be 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 yes n s 1 to 2 okay where n minus 1 is your penultimate shell the shell that is inside okay where n is your outermost shell or we also like to call it as ultimate shell okay what do we call it ultimate shell all right this is called as ultimate shell understood understood yes derivation maybe maybe i think uh, i think it's a very good question lokesh derivation maybe but check out the sample paper yes from there you will understand you will get a clear idea of what kind of questions are coming okay all right moving on general electronic configuration of f block elements n minus 2 f to the power f 1 to 14 f1 f2 f3 f4 it can be anything okay then n minus 1 d 0 1 and ns 2 now n minus 2 is the shell that is inner to the penultimate shell so there is the outermost shell 
penultimate shell and then the shell that we are talking about here n minus 2 and n minus 1 is obviously your penultimate shell that shell that is just just behind the outermost shell okay the shell that is just behind the outermost shell is called as penultimate shell and then finally it is outermost and is outermost shell okay all right okay got it moving on magnetic moment that might be asked to you that might be asked to you for three to four marks okay for three to four marks okay so mu is equal to n n plus 2 bore magneton bore magneton what is n n is your number of unpaired electron okay n is your number of unpaired electron mu effective is equal to effective magnetic moment and bm is bore magneton can somebody please answer sharun's uh, doubt he has been spamming a little too much guys can you please answer sharun's doubt okay moving on coordination compounds what will we be asked in coordination compound let's check it out so in coordination compound i hope that you remember which one is the central metal atom which one is the ligand and which one is the counter ion yes everything that is inside the square bracket is your coordination entity the square bracket with the positive which with the with the overall charge is your coordination sphere and then what do you have what do you have you have a counter ion which is outside here this is your central metal atom and here okay it got a little messed up because google slide to ppt but these are your ligands here okay this is your ligand this is your ligand this is your counter ion okay the free anions or they can be free cations as well thank you everybody sharun did you get your answer everybody has written it for you everyone has been giving you the answer my dear student okay everybody gave you the answer guys yes alkaline have vinyl has given you the answer akshay has given you the answer so sharun i hope i hope that i hope that it is clear i asked you ma'am please sorry why you are supposed to ask me but i only did not want to answer because i was teaching you something else anyway here is your cheat sheet bacha log here bacha log everybody everybody clear okay full okay full okay full everyone please 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 focus up focus up they do do they they do this in the movie you no? know anyway yeah focus up focus up focus up focus up focus up for k2cr2o7 yes they might potassium dichromate potassium permanganate or short short question may definitely come so please read those if not anything they will they will ask you about reactions yes they will ask you about reactions do you remember how how they how the oxidation process happens right remember that uh, how do how they give you io3 minus or if you add sulfate to sulfite and all of that is there no those reactions please read it ha huh? those reactions please read it can i copy it i'll give you the pdf in the telegram channel bachcha after the class ends i'll give you the pdf okay i'll give you the pdf <laughs> can i take oh love your idea but no you don't have to you don't have to cheat you don't have to you don't have to memorize anything okay understand learn the concept that's what is going to help you chalo monodentate neutral okay what are the neutral ligands ammonia water carbon monoxide and pyridine okay ammonia water carbon monoxide and pyridine then monodentate those which have a new those which have a negative charge okay negative charge see these ones have a negative charge which ones azide bromide chloride cyanide fluoride hydroxide and nitride these ones will give you negative charge one one minus one charge so if you are asked to calculate the oxidation state that's when this 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 cheat sheet will be maximum pro max handy when will it be pro max handy when you are asked to calculate the oxidation state so i'll give it to you don't worry okay yes now you have bidentate ligands also remember bidentate ligands those which hold the metal with two claws okay two claws so neutral ligands you have bipyridine and ethylene diamine yes bipy can be the formula or you can write it as en <laughs> okay and minus 2 charge which ones are there carbonate oxide oxalate and sulfate how do you write it carbonato oxalato sulfato oxo okay this is how you write the name okay 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 everybody clinical clear guys do we have clinical clear do we have clinical clear yes easy peasy biryani is tasty tomorrow's paper will be biryani tasty absolutely right tomorrow's paper will be biryani tasty 
you want to take akshay i'll be I'll, I'll be giving you the slides bacha i'll be providing you with the ppt just after the class okay all right just after the class i'll be providing it to you don't worry chalo now here are some of the complexes some of the most common a complexes that are asked in your exam all right some of the complexes that are asked in your exam and their magnetic behavior hybridization shape everything is written here you can check it out okay if i'm not in telegram how to get pdf but that's the only way i do not know how else i do not know how else or maybe you can take somebody else's number and they can send it to you okay okay so paramagnetic okay all right so this i will give it to you you can check it out okay this i will give it to you you can check it out now hello alkins and hello aries it's for 45 minutes let's not let's not waste more time guys let's not waste more time carbonate and carbonyl how do you okay co3 2 minus co3 2 minus and you have carbonyl carbon monoxide co co and co3 2 minus that's how you differentiate that's how you differentiate muthu very late very late huh very late my assumption my assumption is that you will be getting numericals for at least 13 marks 12 to 13 marks you will be getting for numericals okay from all the chapters not at least i think that will be the maximum maximum amount of numericals 12 to 13 okay yes chalo moving on moving on hello alkins ha huh? so method of preparation of hello alkins how do you prepare al hello alkins from alcohols you can prepare this is your reaction you can take roh plus hx use a catalyst and then you get rx plus h2o yes then you get you take roh plus pcl5 you will get rcl plus pocl3 plus hcl no point of me reading the whole thing i'll give it to you don't worry what can you do method of preparation from alkanes also you can prepare it yes this is this is your alkane from alkane you can prepare it like this okay from alkenes also you can prepare it so you take alkene and then you take hx that means halide okay you will take a halide yes then what will you get you will get this now you have to remember here that marco marco nikov's rule if you remember you have studied this in class 11 right marco nikov's rule said that if there are two products one of them will be favored one of them will be favored okay there is also anti marco nikov's rule if you use a peroxide here okay if you use a peroxide here you all are talk, taking in you all are talking in chemistry for oh. <laughs> yes okay all right yes so this is important this is important this is just preparation now electrophilic substitution reaction you have it here see if you have a ch3 here plus x2 fe dark now what will happen what will happen you will have the same thing but x will get added here and then and then what else will you get you will get ortho halo toluene toluene and you will get para halo toluene as well name reaction sand mayer's reaction okay krish very good bachcha aap yahi sare cheeze notice karo hai na aapka kal exam hai aap usko jaane do aap yahi cheeze notice karo bachcha kya baat hai kya baat hai yes very good very good bachcha amazing now sand mayer's reaction what do you get in sand mayer's reaction yes you will first get benzene diazonium halide from there you will get aryl aryl halide okay from there you will get aryl halide okay all right chalo moving on moving on what other reactions do you have you have nucleophilic substitution reaction electrophilic substitution reaction and you also have reactions with metal where you have wurz fittig reaction and fittig reaction okay all right i'll be giving you the slides so please just please just take a look at it there is no point me teaching you about mechanism right now i'll be providing you with the slides please take a look at it okay all right yes moving on no i did not say anything in hindi i was actually just trying to scold that one student who said something really bad okay yes now alcohol phenol and ether okay even in this see preparation how do you prepare alcohol this is a whole chart that i have given you from alkyl halides you can prepare alkenes aldehydes and ketone carboxylic acid and grignard reagent okay this is how you prepare and then the reactions as in what do you add with what do you add with alcohol and what is it that you get okay that is also written here just go through this just go through the chart i'm pretty sure you will be able to score 
good marks in organic. Organic has what? Majority of the marks is from organic. Just go through this. This is for your quick revision. This is for your quick revision. Now coming to phenol. Coming to phenol. Same thing, bacha. This is for preparation. This is for preparation. Yes. And these are the reactions. These are the reactions. What you have to do is just, just take a look at these arrows. Okay. Just take a look at these arrows. When you add these, you get the phenol. And from phenol, if you add these, then this is what you are getting. Okay. All right. <coughs> yes, Sanjay, I'll be sharing the PDF just after this class, Bacha. Okay, yes, yes, I'll be sending you the PDF just after this class. The moment I end the class, I'll be sending it to you in the Telegram channel. Don't forget to join the Telegram channel. I'll tell you how to join the Telegram channel also, okay? Ma'am, important. Harshita, tomorrow is class 12's exam, Bacha. Let's take a look at class 12, okay? Now, R O R 1. Here is this also. Yes, this is also there. You don't have to look at the you don't have to look at the mechanism anymore. Just learn these, okay? Just learn these. These are your what you should have in your fingertips, okay? What you should have in your fingertips is what I'm giving it to you here. Okay? Now we have anisole. So I have only taken one and I'm just showing this as an example. If you know about anisole, then I think you can do it for the others also. Okay, you can do it for the others also. Moving on, aldehyde, ketone, and carboxylic acid. Ne next chapter. Next chapter. Once again, everybody. Yes, once again, this is for preparation. This is your prep. This is your preparation. How will you prepare RCHO? Okay. And then from here, RCOR dash. Okay. How will you prepare? Again, preparation. Again, prep. This is also preparation. All right. Then what do you have? This is also preparation. This is for aromatic. Okay. This is for aromatic preparation. All right. Yes. Then again, you have aromatic CHO here, aromatic aldehyde basically. Okay. You have this also. Yes. You have this also. Apart from that, now from ethanol, from ethanol and propanone, from ethanol and propanone, products from acetaldehyde, that is ethanol, what are you getting? And the products from acetone, propanone, these are also here. Please don't forget to. Yes, Bacha, I will be sending. Yes, yes, yes. All of these slides, I will be sending it to you. Again, products from continuation of the same slide. Continuation of the same slide is here. Okay. All right. Yes, apart from that, again, continuation from the same thing, ethanol and propanol, same thing, product from acetone and product from acetaldehyde, okay. Then comes to carboxylic acid, once again, preparation this side and reaction this side, cool, reaction this side, this is from cyclohexane, right, Cy cyclohexane, from cyclohexane, how the oxidation is, how the oxidation is happening after you add KMnO4, this is what it is. The last reaction and finally amines you have Hoffman bromide degradation, Gra Gabriel thalamide synthesis and reduction of nitro compounds. Ammonolysis, reduction of nitriles, reduction of amines, alkylation, acylation. <coughs> so basically all of these are there and the chemical properties of aromatic amines is also I have added. Preparation of benzene diazonium compounds. I think you remember that we, we uh, recently had a this thing, right? Most repeated questions. Most repeated questions. We have done this experiment. Yes, we have done this. Isn't it? Apart from that, finally, biomolecules. Biomolecules does not have much. That's like free of cost marks, which you can easily get it if you have just read the chapter once, right? From here, amino acid to how it goes to Zwitter ion. And then, you know, ion at low pH, neutral pH, Zwitter ion and ion at high pH. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, everybody? Yes. Okay, so the whole chemistry is done everybody. You will be getting the PDF. You will be getting the PDF in some time. Thank you so much. But last but not the least, let me tell you how to join the Telegram channel. Okay? Let me tell you how to join the Telegram channel. So here is... Oops. Huh. Here, this is our session. Right? This is our session. Let me also like it. I have also liked it. Great. <coughs> now... Let me show you guys here. What we should do is. What we should do is. Here. Ha. Huh. Okay. Let me show you. Take a look at it. Take a look at it. Here you have your telegram channel. This is your telegram channel link. Just go and click on it. 
I will be giving you the PDF. Within five minutes, you'll be getting the PDF. After that, if you are still looking for a crash course for your JE, or if you are repeating your JE exam this time, then there are two courses here. You can click on those and don't forget to use my code that is NB Pro. Okay, NB Pro is my code. You can use that if you want a discount. But otherwise, your other course. But most importantly, right now, join the Telegram channel. Okay. Do join the Telegram channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. After the exam, you can also catch hold of me on my Instagram account, which is Navamita underscore Nobita. That's all for today. Lots of love and all the very best, my dear warriors. I will see you after your exam for your JE, for your JE preparation. See ya and EM self preparation as well. So all the very best, all the very best. See you. Bye bye.